Hi, I'm Riley from the Center for Arkansas Farms and Food, and today we'll be discussing how to create an organic systems plan to prepare for certification. An organic systems plan, or an OSP, communicates to your certifier the practices that you use on your farm and demonstrates how they may or may not comply with organic standards. The OSP will be submitted with your application to become certified organic and is updated and resubmitted annually. The OSP should clearly explain to the certifier your operating plan, including information on crops to be grown, farm acreage, source of seeds or plants, maintaining soil fertility, preventing pest outbreaks, controlling weeds, managing diseases, and sales and marketing. An OSP must include a description of farming practices, how often they are done, monitoring systems and record keeping systems, including a list of each substance to be used as a production input, a description of the practices established to prevent commingling of organic and conventional products, and any additional information deemed necessary by the certifying agent to evaluate compliance with regulation. So why is an OSP needed for the certification process? Well, the OSP is the backbone for the inspection process. A certifier will review a farmer's OSP before scheduling an inspection. Some applications may be stalled at this step if they do not have the information necessary. If an inspection is scheduled, the inspector will bring a copy of the OSP to guide their inspection. The OSP serves as a legally binding contract between you and your certifier. Once a certifier approves your OSP, you have a written guarantee from the certifier that your practices and materials are acceptable. So it is important to accurately represent your farming practices on your OSP. Another section of your OSP requires you to describe practices used on field histories for new farms or new plots. This is only required the first time a farm submits an organic application or any time a farm expands their operation to new land. Information required in this section are the field size, crops including cover crops for the past 36 months, and all inputs used for the past 36 months. An OSP also requires that you identify potential risks for contamination and commingling with conventional products on your farm. In addition to identifying these risks, you must also describe the practices you use to prevent commingling and how you will monitor these risks and prevention practices. For instance, if you use the same piece of equipment on a conventional side of your property and an organic part of your property, you must identify this risk, describe prevention practices you might use, such as cleaning that piece of equipment, and how you monitor that. Your OSP will also ask you to describe practices and prevention techniques for pest, disease, and weed management. Here at the calf farm, we might note that we use tarps to prevent weed growth. Your OSP will also ask you to identify natural resources on your property and practices that you can use to conserve biodiversity. These might specifically include conserving water, soil, wildlife, woodlands, and wetlands on your property. Your OSP will also require that you submit a materials list. This materials list must be exhaustive and complete with every material input that you will use on your farm. That may include things like soil amendments, pesticides, and seeds and stock. Your OSP should also include a farm map, complete with field numbers and names, field boundaries, buildings, roads, and permanent features, streams, ponds, irrigation ditches, any adjoining land use, and buffer zones. This map should also have a consistent scale. Your OSP should also have a section that tells you how to audit your traceability. You should be able to trace forward one step to your buyer and one step back to where your produce comes out of the field. This will help maintain organic integrity. Many growers will also include lot numbers on their produce to ensure that their traceability is accurate. Make sure you keep these records for five years. Your OSP will also have a section on seed stock purchasing. All seed stock and seedlings must be from an organic source. If you are not able to locate an organic source, your seeds must at least be non-GMO and you must keep a record that you checked three different sources that you were not able to find organic stock from. Your OSP will also ask you for a description of soil, crop, and nutrient management practices how you monitor these practices, and any record keeping associated. It will specifically ask you for practices that you use to prevent soil erosion, inputs that you use, and compost and manure usage. 
We hope this video has given you a good overview of how to create a crop producer's organic systems plan. Look in our show notes below for links for the templates used in this video. Be sure to like and subscribe and follow along as we continue to learn more about organic farming.